Hi folks, this is Greg with Best Choice Trailers, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Today I'm going to take you for a walk around the Shore Track Gooseneck Deck Over Tilt Deck. This particular trailer's got a few options on it. Take you around, show you what's standard and optional. Show you some of the reasons why we like this particular trailer and think you should give it some consideration. So first of all, Shore Track we go with a lot uh, on their Deck Over Tilts because of angle. It's one of the problems we routinely see from certain customers of this trailer would be that they can't get the appropriate ramp angle. So on a short track, I'll show you here in a second, their angle on this particular unit is coming in at about 15.25 degrees. They place the axle slightly farther ahead of where a lot of your Texas manufacturers are gonna put the axle on this particular unit. This one from roughly the rear to the center of the axle is measuring about nine feet, give or take. Some of the other ones we see in the industry are about seven and a half to eight foot. Due to that, their angle tends to be about 17 degrees. One of the common complaints we hear from customers with those trailers is ramp angle. A lot of times they gotta put a winch on the trailer to be able to get uh, their equipment up in wet conditions or icy conditions. So two things we've done on this trailer, one up front and center, you'll see we've added an optional winch plate. And then on the floor, rather than go with some of the other options in the industry, which are quite expensive, we've gone with standard oak. It's fairly inexpensive, gives uh, your trailer some extra durability, doesn't add too crazy an amount of extra weight. So we designed this one here with the uh, winch plate and the oak deck to try and give it premium traction at a reduced price. Again, angle on this is about 15.25 degrees, unlike 17 on many in the industry. Okay, so a couple of the features we like on this one. One, they get tread plate at the rear tail. If you're dragging something uh, up on, it'll slide a little bit on there for you. Short Trek also gives you a lot more tie downs than uh, some. So we got D-rings. There are six on this particular unit. Stake pockets on approximately two and a half to maybe three foot centers. And then chain spools in between. And then as you move forward on the trailer, you're gonna get stake pockets on approximately a two foot center. So they put the uh, tread plate uh, over their fender well areas. Notice on the tread plate, they go ahead and silicone all your joints. This particular unit's also got 8K axle upgrades as noticed by the 17.5 rubber and the oil bath hubs. So the 8K axle upgrade, just to give you a rough idea, is about a $1,700 to $2,000 option. Uh, some manufacturers in the industry, we've seen upward of 25. Now some people say, well, for just a thousand pound more GVW per axle, that's a lot of money to spend. But a 7K axle would be your uh, upper end of the uh, homeowner or what they would call light duty axles. 8K axles would be the entry level medium duty axles. A medium duty is gonna take you to a few things. One thing you're gonna get is three and three eighth inch brake assemblies by 12 and a quarter. For those not familiar, that'd be the same brake assembly that you'd find on a dual tandem. So what you get on an 8K axle is a, a trailer that's got superior braking. It's got a GVW that keeps some guys on certain trucks, particularly three quarter ton diesels, out of a CDL. And it gives you, of course, 17.5 rubber. 17.5 rubber is a 16 ply, comes with about twice the tread of a normal tire. It's gonna last a lot longer. And again, even though you've only got 16,000 pound of axle, you're gonna have 4,800 pound per tire or about 19,200 pound of tire on this rig, which means you're gonna have about 3,000 pound more tire than what you've got axle, which generally tends to be a good thing. Also on medium duty axles, you're gonna jump up to oil bath hubs. Oil bath is gonna lubricate better than grease, designed for more of your commercial, uh, longer range commercial activity. Short Track goes ahead and puts a dual piston hoist on this. They also have an optional scissor hoist. However, we find that on this particular trailer where your pivot points farther back, the dual ram provides more than enough lift for this particular trailer. Folks, keep in mind the one struggle we have on this particular unit is deck over tilts oftentimes tend to be too heavy for the GVW that you just don't get a whole lot of payload. I think Short Track's done an excellent job on this rig, putting together a unit that's not too heavy, not too light, works for what most people are gonna try and use it for. Uh, we also have other units available to us that we do sell that we like. They come with lots of features, but again, it's a struggle and a balance between GVW and payload, you know, features and payload. So, a couple things we like on Shore Track they do the I beam neck. 
Uh, one thing you don't often see is the gusset plate up in the neck. A lot of times they'll weld both sides, but I don't always see the gusset plates. Notice they also put the uh, the under neck bridge there. Uh, Shore Track does the neck gussets, which gives support from the vertical to the horizontal. A lot of little finish quality details. They do the uh, dual jacks. They do the uh, bolt on it. If you need to replace it, you can easily do so. Of course, you got your corded 20 foot remote uh, KTI pump, power up and power down. We've got a DECA Deep Cycle Marine battery. We've had different manufacturers use different batteries and we're very pleased with the performance we get out of the DECAs. And then they've got the uh, 110 volt charger. Okay, it is a lockable toolbox. If you don't watch what you're doing, you can also bump your head. 10 inch high beam frame is standard. Most of the industry uh, is either going to use an 8 or a 10 inch. This is the larger 10 inch. Short track does the uh, side steps on both sides, standard feature. They also do the integrated front bulkhead, nice looking design, as well as the newer style bullet LED lights. And of course, the short track embossed reflector tape going down the sides. Okay, one major difference we find on these than most in the industry, they're going to take and undercoat this trailer. Uh, you see a little bit of a run. Now, my understanding is some customers don't like the run, but uh, I don't know about you, I'd rather see a run than rust. So we find that this undercoating does a tremendous job at uh, you know being a lot more durable than paint. Which, speaking of paint, Short Track on this particular unit uh, uses a polyurethane paint. For those not familiar, polyurethane tends to be very durable. It's also very expensive, which is why you generally only see it on higher end trailers like uh, livestock trailers, for instance, where they've got uh, urine and things that would otherwise uh, uh, deteriorate an acrylic enamel trailer much faster. So urethane paint standard. Also, Short Track in this side row here uses box tube. Uh, box tube we see a fair amount in the industry. Also, some use channel. Uh, the reason they use tube on that side rail is uh, on a trailer like this where you've got two separate frames and they're not welded in place, you need something that's got some strength for that torsional load that you're going to put on it. So again, they're using tube on the side rail. Okay, on this particular trailer, uh, you got two spots. On a bumper pull, you've only really got one spot for a, a spare. That would be uh, underneath the trailer. On a gooseneck, of course, you got a spot in the neck as well. So there's not too many differences other than running gear between a 7 and an 8K axle on this trailer, but the bed frame or the bed sill is one of them. So some manufacturers go a little bit excessive on the bed sill. Some don't do any bed sill, and they just take the uh, the, the dual rams, tie them into cross members, and then uh, go to the outer frame. Bed sill is pretty important. It does add some weight. I would say uh, Short Track is not the lightest duty or the heaviest duty in this particular area on a 7K. Although on an 8K, they do go pretty heavy duty. Uh, it's a four inch tube, four inch by four inch by quarter inch wall. Uh, pretty stout bed frame necessary on the uh, higher GVWs like this with the running gear upgrade. So they do a 16 on center floor cross member. Okay, try and give you a shot of that. Going back, we of course picked the cleanest trailer to show you here today. Uh, one of the other features that we like on Shore Track that unfortunately you can't see right now with this bed up is actually underneath the trailer. They do a much better job than most. Uh, right there you can see we've seen some really crazy ideas uh, not necessarily good on the back spring assist light bar so the light bar springs up short track's got a separate fab part that attaches underneath that they hook that light bar to we've seen a lot of manufacturers especially in the Texas area that uh, tend to take a torch and torch out cross members and lose structure in the back and then what you oftentimes get is a belly in that back tread plate because the structure is gone. Something to consider. If you're looking at one of those Texas tilts, take a look underneath it, see how that spring light bar is attached, and see what you find. Okay, so again, this does have the oak deck. Standard would be a treated pine. The oak deck's not a real expensive upgrade. We do it on a lot of ours. And again, you've got the winch plate up front and center. Shown here is a 22-footer. They also offered in a 24. You can get it in a four-foot stationary as well which would be a 22 plus four. GBW on this uh, 17.6, on the 7K axle would be 15,000. This particular unit empty is gonna weigh in in the uh, low fives, probably gonna be in the 52, 5300 pound range. 
Gives you about a anywhere from a 10 to uh, 13, 14,000 mount GBW on a 7 to 8K axle setup, depending on gooseneck or bumper pull. Ideal for most skid loaders, mini excavators, and uh, various equipment, farm, farm tractors and whatnot. If you have any questions on this or any of our other trailers, give us a ring, 717-220-4220, or visit us on the web at bestchoicetrailers.com. Thanks for looking.